Jackie came straight here from BIA, landed at 12 o'clock, so it's only two and a half hours to get downtown. Yeah, I'm I almost missed my flight too, and I was like, Jeff will kill me. I would not kill you. Um, <laughs> uh, coming back from Minneapolis, right? New York. And, oh, today. from New York. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, and you are finished now with Techstars? With our second Techstars, yes. Second Techstars. Uh, can you talk about why on earth would someone do Techstars a second time? You know, we're still doing retros on that. Um, so our, we did our first Techstars here in Boulder. And that one, we, I like barely knew what Techstars was, to be quite frank. It's, it's been fascinating to hear the last two speakers because... Um, with, with Andy talking about transferring skill sets, I was a, a school teacher with Teach for America, and then I did oppositional research for political candidates, and now I'm the CEO of a wearable tech company. And I swear the skill sets did transfer. Um, but what I've had to figure out is HR and finance. Um, but the first tech stars was really just like, what does it even mean to build a team, build a company? How do you talk to investors? It's a very coachable skill. It's a, awkward to practice, but it's very coachable. And then this one um, we did with, in partnership with Target. Um, we have a consumer electronics product, and I'd never worked retail today in my life. And so I was like, I should probably know how this works. <laughs> I need to know what NCAPs are and peg velocity means and how do you establish partnerships with a corporation that has 341,000 employees um, and not get crushed by them. And so I would say that we learned a ton, but completely on different spectrums. So I skipped to the like end first, go back to the beginning. Uh, <laughs> what were you teaching? I taught Spanish at a bilingual school. So you're teaching bilingual Spanish, politics, and then you're like, CEO of tech company sounds good. Yeah, I was like an intern and a CEO simultaneously for a while. Um, that was like a real, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Like that's why I like people joke with, when people are touchy about titles. I'm like, let it go. <laughs> like let it, it is not a big deal. It's about what you're getting to work on. Um, but uh, I came up with the idea when I was in college for Revelar. Um, so Revelar is a discrete wearable that clips comfortably under clothing or onto your keys. If you're feeling uneasy or unsafe, you can press it and let people know your status and uh, share your live updating location. And it has different capabilities for different situations, so you can exit uncomfortable conversation, have friends virtually walk you home, um, or have help sent to you, depending on how you trigger it. And um, I'd come up with this concept and when I was in college and started the patent process my senior year. And um, we actually just got awarded the patent four years later. So that was really exciting, like two weeks ago. Um, And somebody told me it's going to take you years to bootstrap to get off the ground. And so I thought, let me pick teaching. That pays really well. And (laughs) It's been my experience. Yeah, right? Yeah, right? You have the, uh, I had, when when I started teaching, I was so dumb. And uh, I was like, well, you get done at three. I'll have the rest of the day to like write code and do whatever, build side projects, you know. So then you find so, out how much great. Yeah, takes three. I didn't know it was three a.m. That was yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely. People were like, "How on earth? You know, Teach for America is an intense program. Like, how did you do both?" And I was like, "Well, you know, I didn't have anything else to do, so I was just doing it all." Um, but the leadership that came from that, like the skill set, I think, if nothing else, I gained the emotional intelligence to handle what it looks like. And funny enough, studying child development, um, on our board is uh, Jenny Lawton. She was the CEO of MakerBots, the 3D printing company. And um, her and I talk about how the scaling of a company is follows very much like the um, development of a child. Like when we were a teeny team, it was like being in kindergarten. It's super easy. Like it's just, you know, you're all friends. It's a tiny little circle. You're all living in like our apartment, which we literally did. Um, and then you start to grow, and it gets really awkward, like middle school. Like you start to like not know how to communicate anymore because and you have limbs different teams. All, like, yeah, and it gets really awkward. So yeah. we like we're squarely in middle school, and I think now we're in high school. I'd like to think that like we're getting slightly better at communicating. Um, Please tell me there's like an R letter jacket. I mean, we we have like gear now, so yeah, kind of. Um, but like the varsity jackets. Uh, we wanted to make sure to set back-to-back Techstars champs because we were the only company, especially the only female-led company who's ever done Techstars twice, let alone back-to-back. Um, but I, I don't think our business would be where it is without that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's definitely been, I think you feel the growing pains. Continuing my totally non-linear questioning, uh, in college, how'd you get interested in like this issue? Um, 
so the inspiration from Rebel R was uh, deeply personal. My little sister was assaulted twice before the age of 17. After her second attack, uh, she had to get homeschooled her senior year of high school when I was in college. And um, my mom bought her pepper spray, because that's what you buy the people in your life when you're worried about their safety, something like a pepper spray. And um, she was being homeschooled, and they required that people go to testing sites to prove that they're not cheating and like actually learning something. Um, and because she had pepper spray on her keychain, and they knew f full well why she was being homeschooled, um, they confiscated the pepper spray, failed her on the exam, suspended her for over a week from her, from her online school, um, which I was like, my sister was like, how do you suspend somebody from their own home? Um, and it went on her permanent record that she brought a weapon to school, um, which I was really pissed off about, uh, to be quite frank. And I had, in college, I'd studied in Italy and in Spain and learned that we're incredibly lucky in the United States to even have self-defense laws. Um, police officers, my first day in Italy, told me that if I were to use pepper spray against an attacker, I would go to jail. They didn't have self-defense laws. Um, in the Netherlands, that actually recently happened in like the last year, somebody uh, stopped at a rapist with pepper spray and, not, and is now facing charges for using pepper spray. Um, and so I realized that in countries, and having lived in countries like Mexico and in Switzerland, I knew that the, the legal systems are not the same everywhere, but that the problems were. And what I saw was a lack of an ability to communicate efficiently. I mean, my sister, I think everybody always has their smartphone on them. Um, but you just don't have time, realistically, to take it out, unlock it, call for help, let alone answer questions. Um, and calling 911 is a privilege that some people feel safe calling 911. Not everybody feels safe calling 911. Um, and you know, growing up in Latin America, we definitely don't call the police. Um, that is not something my family in Colombia would think to do. And so it's like, how do you reach out to the people that love you most? knowing that they're the ones who are most likely in the best position to help you. Um, so she was absolutely the inspiration and just started the patent process from there. So you get out of teaching, decide to start doing the company full time. Uh, and how did you like get the initial wheels turning? Um, you just grabbed a 3D printer and you're like, back up everybody, I've that, got oh, this. The first time I saw a 3D printer, I was like, hey, you know, talk about magic. I mean, I like, I couldn't agree more. I actually wrote a blog that said Techstars felt like, like I was a muggle and then I discovered the magical world of tech. Um, I was like, whoa, this is where it's been, huh? Because um, I was an international studies and Spanish major, like total Luddite. Um, but um, what was the question again? Like, how did you actually get the ball <laughs> rolling? Like, oh, you had, the, you had um, the idea, a little bit of business plan. Whew. Like, how do you make a thing? First thing I did was trick my co-founder into living with me. Um, you have to have that rock star by you, and she actually went to business school, so she knew, like, what a business plan should look like and how to put it together. Um, if you've ever watched Silicon Valley, you know, the when, like, Jared comes in, and he's like, what are your roles and responsibilities? That was, like, the equivalent of my co-founder coming in. She was like, so what are we going to do about roles and, and this and that? And I was like, What? <laughs> Like, we're just going to build this, okay? Like, it's going to be great. And she's like, okay, but like, how? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out. And so we went to, we were living together, working part-time jobs. That's when I was the intern. Um, and uh, we went to Denver Startup Week. And I pulled a bunch of my friends who worked night shifts, like, like had night jobs. I got them fake business cards so we'd look like a bigger team than we were. <laughs> um, there's like a lot to be said for faking it until you make it. And just one. Yeah, and so we rolled with like eight people to our first Denver Startup Week. I was like, this is what you're going to say. This is all you're going to say. <laughs> I was like, you're going to go to all the events because I wish I could be there. You're going to take notes for me. I'm going to buy you dinner at the end of this week and um, bring me all the business cards for anybody you meet that's interested. And so we made it look like our team was a lot bigger than it was. Um, and we ended up winning a back of the napkin competition, which won us free legal services and... Um, I learned what SEO was, um, so we had to change our name. And <laughs> what was the original name? <laughs> oh, we've gone through a few, but the last one was Fear Hyphen Less Solutions, Fear Less Solutions, which was a mouthful. Um, and like, no way we were ever going to win that online battle, yes. so we rebranded. Um, and we also met uh, mentors. I went to the Women Who Startups. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Women Who Startup here. It's phenomenal, run by Lizelle, um, and. I had read research as a teacher that if you tell boys no more questions, they're more likely to still shout out or keep their hand up and ask the question they want to ask. Um, the little girls are less likely to. 
And so I knew that like women who start up, I was like, this is gonna be my panel. Like if anyone's gonna care about what I'm trying to do, it's gonna be these people. And um, Lizelle, who didn't know me back then, was like way in the back and like didn't see my hand raise. And I'm like right in the front so I could get their attention. Um, and there was this really awkward moment where um, they said no more questions and I kept my hand up and I was like, oh my God, this research better be right. <laughs> I was like, this is so embarrassing. And I kept my hand up and the people on stage started laughing at me and they're like, you know, let her ask her question. Like she clearly isn't going anywhere. <laughs> um, and I literally said, like I was a teacher. I know business is about relationships. At the end of the day, it's about who you know. I'm trying to end rape culture via tech and I don't know anybody. Um, so how, how do you get your foot in the door? And they all offered up to, to talk to me and of all of them, Jane Miller, who's in Natural Foods, by the way, um, became one of my mentors. I read her book, Sleeping Your Way to the Top and Other Myths About Business. And she then introduced me to the Foundry Group, who are now our investors. Um, but it, was, it really started at Denver Startup Week and just kind of putting ourselves out there um, and making sure that people heard what we were attempting to try to do. So at Denver Startup Week two weeks ago, I was with a mutual friend of ours, uh, another female CEO of a tech-led company. <laughs> And she was like, this, I was like, how's your week, man? She's like, I, you know, it's nice, but I got invited to so many things. Every day I was invited to like 14 things. And then I realized why fucking Jackie's in Minneapolis. And so everybody's <laughs> inviting me as like the one lady CEO. I'm like, okay, well, Jackie's back now. So we're back to two. Y'all can split, <laughs> split duty. Um, so Denver Startup Week is, is pretty neat. If you didn't get to engage with it this year, like definitely check it out next I year. I love it. So you get a couple of folks together. Uh, I believe you uh, beg, borrow, and stole some like technical t people at the beginning and some of their yeah. time, a little bit of like side time and side uh, while they were doing other jobs or like coming off of other jobs. Is that right? For sure. I mean, we got our one. It, it was kind of like a real ragtag team, right? Um, so our first CTO um, had failed retirement twice, and he was an advisor for the incubator Innisfere we were a part of and heard about, we had launched a Kickstarter. So we got offered from the Foundry Group seed funding and launched our Kickstarter simultaneously. I literally fainted at the end of those three months. It was like a lot, because there was only two and a half of us working at that point. Um, but both things weren't successful. And um, he calls me up in the middle of our Kickstarter, and he's like, I'm an advisor for Innisphere. My guess is you're using low energy Bluetooth. Do you need somebody to build you a prototype? And I was like, how'd you know? You know, like, I was like, he's like, well, it had to be Bluetooth. Like, how else were you going to make it talk to the phone and da-da-da? And I was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> he would, like, print out sheets for me and be like, this is a crystal. This is a clock. This is, you know, an electronic circuit board. This is how it works. Um, and then we got into Techstars, and he came along for the ride. And then Tom, who is another advisor for Innisphere and has 25 years supply chain and manufacturing experience, he was a former VP of Global Engineering at Otterbox, did the same thing. And I like, people are like, how did you get these people? I'm like, they found me, which is the craziest thing. Um, and then our, you know, I call him our little genius dev, Juan, completely self-taught iOS, um, had just graduated from college, was Andrea's little cousin, lived in Texas. And I get on a call with him and he's like, I really want to learn how to, you know, you know build iOS. And I was like, okay, um, well, I have no money. You can live on our couch. And, you know, like, that's, you're just going to have to figure it out. I'm not going to be able to give you any kind of guidance, um, zero support. So like, if you want the job, it's yours, but like, you got to get over here. <laughs> and to his credit, God, he showed up in his car from Texas like three days later. Credit is an interesting word, you like, know? Like, he's, like, he's making like, <laughs> odd life choices. And within a year, he did our iOS, our Android, and our Java backend. And when we brought on Pivotal um, to help support us, he, did, he scored so high on his first day that he's now the bar for hires. Like, if you can't do as well as Juan did on day one, then we're not going to talk to you. Because, like, this kid came from, he wasn't even, like, didn't even go to school for it. He just, like, sits there and he just wants, and he's, like, can't wait to just focus on iOS. Because he's, like, can you please stop making me do everything else? I'm, like, you're kind of it. So, um, but he really just wants to do iOS. One of the parts I don't want to overlook in that story, do you, you have one on you? A device? Yes. Uh, can you like hold it? Yes. Uh, I was like, where? Is that you said you were on Kickstarter 
Yeah. But there's a thing. Like it actually, you actually it made did. a thing. And we delivered on time, which is Ooh. we went from prototype to full nationwide retail launch in eight months, um, which for hardware companies is like pretty unheard of. Um, again, serious credit to our now CTO, Tom. With his manufacturing relationships, he knew how to get it done. He knocked it out like nothing I'd ever seen before. Like that man just moves so fast. Um, and you know, same credit to our software team who like pulled it together and and we face significant technical obstacles. Like, you know, with iOS, if you kill the app, you'd lose the connection and they found a workaround for that. And um, you know, the things that they they overcame technically has just been super impressive. Um, and their patience with me as they've had to teach me and coach me through all of this has been fantastic. It's good to have good people, right? I mean, yeah. it's also like it's one thing to say, like, well, these great people, they just gave us all our time, all their time, and they made it really successful. But obviously, it's a product and an idea and a problem and a mission that, like, really resonates with people. And they're willing to, like, hang up uh, other things, such as being retired in the mountains or on the beach or whatever, to, like, come, come help you out with it, which is pretty amazing. Uh, now, where can they, where, where do devices get sold? So currently, we're nationwide with Brookstone, um, BestBuy.com, Amazon Launchpad, and uh, going to be on Target.com soon. So Pretty excited. Awesome. Yeah, I found out retail doesn't, their dot-coms move way faster than in-store. They only reset twice a year. Huh. So I was like, that's it, huh? Like, so no changes except for twice a year. Hmm. Um, so that's good to know. If people want to, like, experiment with, uh, like, from a technical side, like I want to, I want to check it out. I want to like mess around with the software, anything like that. Any opportunities for them to do that, or ways for them to get involved in the company? Well, we're hiring, um, so <laughs> there's definitely ways to get involved right now. Um, uh, do they have to live on the couch? They do not. Like we have like real, you know, investors and funding now. It's really, it's a nice change. Like it's really nice, um, and it's actually really funny because like we still like. Even after the, like this next funding, will be way closer to market. But when even with with the three million we got from the Foundry Group, that didn't put us in a position to always be at market. And people would be like, "Oh, you know, like my salaries were higher there." And I was like, "Compared to my teacher salary, this is sweet." <laughs> I was like, so I was like probably the only one who felt like I got a bump, <laughs> and everybody else felt like they'd have gone down. Especially the people that came from OtterBox, right? They were like running things <laughs> and taking teacher salaries um, all of a sudden. But um, yeah, absolutely. You know, like we're we, we just put out a whole bunch of job descriptions, and I know that's where we're looking to grow. So it's cool. gonna be a good year. And company is Revolar, R E V O L A R. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks, Jackie. Can we thanks, have Jackie Jack. a three, two, one?